If you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create awesome videos, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. What's going on guys? Today we're going to check out the new Lil Uzi Pink Tape album trailer directed by Gibson Hazard. Gibson Hazard is always putting out great visuals. Lil Uzi's team is always bringing on different talented artists to help achieve the vision. I mean, if we just take a look here at some of these credits, we can see tons of different people working on this. The day this dropped, I was scrolling through Instagram. I saw like seven different people that I followed all posting about all the things that they contributed to the video. So at the end, I want to go through and we can showcase some of these people. But yeah, let's go in, break down the video from a video editor, 3D VFX perspective point of view and talk about some things that can maybe help you guys whenever you're creating your own stuff. So we start off here, we have this anime opening. This was actually created by DART and you can see they've done other projects for the weekend and they've worked on some anime series like Attack on Titan, One Piece, things like that. And we dive into this transition between the animation and the real life footage here. And the first thing that I noticed, the first thing that stuck out to me whenever I saw this, uh, you'll see some of these opening scenes here in a bit. It reminded me of that ASAP Rocky LSD music video where they're walking through Tokyo. A lot of the camera angles, a lot of the shots, so I wonder if that was a big inspiration. Also, I want to talk about here, we have some really cool intro titles and this stuck out to me. I think that this was inspired from Enter the Void. If you guys have ever seen that movie, pretty cool movie. And they have this similar style of titles here where it's just flashing very quickly in different styles and different fonts. Really love that. So if we go frame by frame here, you can see we have something similar here. Pretty cool. And yeah, here's the scene that I was talking about. Reminds me so much of that ASAP Rocky LSD. Again, I don't know if this was maybe part of the treatment, but that shot right there almost looks frame for frame the same. So I thought that was cool. And we have our Akira bike sequence. So we'll talk a bit about some of the cultural things that I noticed a little bit later. This is going to be one of the main sort of switching between real life footage and in studio footage where they shot this probably in front of a green screen, him sitting on the bike, but they do a good job at sort of blending this together with the real footage. So if we go frame by frame here, I'll play this first at full speed. You guys can see, bam, pretty cool. And if we just break that down, you can see if you look over on the left here, they're taking this shot and they're just cutting out a couple of frames. It's essentially just a smart usage of masking, of blur, of shakes, to be able to blend this together. You see it goes from compositing in from this scene, we get some blur, we get some shake into this scene, and then it even switches to a third scene right there. So pretty cool. And I think that's ultimately what Gibson Hazard does best in his videos. He has a great understanding of motion and speed when it comes to crafting a visual. And he also pairs that extremely well with sound design. And I think that's what sells a lot of the effects even better. So let's keep going through here. This might even be the 3D rendered version because the bike looks different. So we'll come back to that a bit later. We get some really awesome transitions here. Here's where our 3D modeled version starts to come into play. And a bit later, we'll show you some transitions from that. Another key thing that I think Gibson Hazard does really well is the movement of the camera. There's never a static shot if you notice that. It's not just a shot of him close up like this. The camera is always moving and swiveling in some unique way and really guiding you through the scene. All right, so here is our transition into our 3D model. And if we go slow, we'll play it in full speed first and then we'll slow it down a bit. We get the classic Gibson Hazard-esque kind of zoom through a car, zoom through a motorcycle, and this shot's really cool. The details there, and if we go slow motion again, that's one of the biggest benefits of being able to control the camera, control the speed. The small details don't have to matter that much whenever things are moving that quick. You can get away with a lot. And if we look at the 3D model, it's not even the craziest looking, most realistic 3D model. Close up here, we have some visual effects going around to sell that idea of the speed. And then a really cool match cut here. So in that little Uzi, uh, just want to rock video that I broke down a couple months ago, they used the match cut a lot. And I've been talking about that in a lot of my tutorials. If you guys want to learn more, it's a really great transition where essentially you're just lining up two different parts of the composition and you see, it doesn't have to be perfect. They zoomed into the dashboard of the bike here. And then if I go to the next frame, this is the next shot, but it's also zoomed into the dashboard. So it creates this sort of seamless transition just like that pretty cool and then we also have the akira bike slide here if you've never seen that 80s anime movie akira this is probably one of the most iconic moments in animation it's been replicated by so many different animation companies so it's a cool sort of homage to see it in there and to see all these different references and things that little uzi's team likes and he likes being thrown in there and now we get our fight scene sequence which i thought was super cool i wish more people did things like this where there's where they're just sort of creating like fun moments 
playing with the camera, creating cool visuals. You'll see there's this sort of slow motion scene right here where he's dodging the uh, sword. It's cool to see people just having fun with the project and not sort of just trying to make this, oh, look, I'm cool, sort of selling the brand that a lot of people do in music videos. And I also love how the change in visual style and the change in what's going on also matches the audio. So again, I can't play the audio, but there's so many different styles in the album, hardcore rock, rapping to even like screamo type songs. So it's cool to see how they're able to match the vibe and the style change in the music with the style change in the visuals. And again, that's one of the key things that I always say people should try and do match the visual to the audio. That's your job when you're creating a music video, try and create that relationship between the two. There's this subtle little change here, which I want to point out. And I'm guessing this was probably the hardest shot to pull off. So props to them. They have a outfit change and you can see how seamless it's morphing from one outfit to the next you have to really match things up perfectly to get that looking the way it did you can even see i think there's is like a guy wearing shorts so it's probably a stuntman thrown in there this seems like it would be really tough to pull off props to them and you get some really cool uh special effects and stunts in this entire sequence so pretty crazy Giant production as a whole, like I said, I want to dive in a little bit and highlight some of these artists that worked on this because they are amazing people. You guys should follow them. I follow a bunch of them. That's how I found out about a lot of the things that were put into here. There's another little 3D scene over top the entire way through from start to finish. They did so many different things. I'm sure you guys have seen this for yourself. I loved it. I love whenever people bring on a ton of different artists and I wish that more people with big budgets did something like this. It feels like there's a big disconnect between people that are all the way up there and they have this established fan base. They have this giant war chest to be able to put into things like this. It doesn't feel like they're tapped into the community or it doesn't feel like they're trying to do something new and experiment and just have fun with the project. So here's another amazing part at the end here where again they're just showcasing these different artists and having them create cool things for the fans for the project itself all coming together and working on this i wish we could see more things like this props to lil uzi and his team again a ton of the things that lil uzi has put out in the past have been just a huge collaboration with all these artists out there all right so let's take a look at some of the people involved in this we'll give them a quick shout outs i'm sure i'm going to miss some people here because there are so many people who did different things if you did work on the project if you're watching this video comment down below and i'll pin your comment and add your instagram handle to the description so this is aiden edits he made that ending sequence with the volcano that I just showed you. Super cool. He's been doing a lot of really cool 3D things for different people. So yeah, awesome work. Go ahead and give Aiden a follow. Again, I'll leave everyone's Instagram down in the comments below so you can check them out. Here is Sauce Babies. He created some of these animations for the project. Here's the different frames for the animation. And then you can see with all these frames put together, here is that full animated bit. And he also has created artwork for Lil Uzi in the past. We also had Scissor Films doing some things for the project. And I've talked about them in the past. They've worked on a lot of Lyrical Lemonade videos and a lot of other music videos that I've been talking about. Made a few tutorials showing a lot of the things that they've done in their work. We also have Reduciano, I think that's how you pronounce it. We can check out his post. Made some titles, billboards, 3D sequences. Um, did some creative design work, storyboard, etc. Shout out to him. Again, link in the description. We also have a Digi Yams, hotel and billboard design work. And if we look through here, pretty cool. Also, internet girlfriend involved in that as well. I'll add her link in the description too. Then we have Lee's. And we'll check out here. Trailer billboards and assets. Kira billboard design, bike design. It's a lot of cool graphics just on the billboards that you saw throughout the entire video. You see right here all these different graphics that were custom made for the project. Super cool. Here's the original Akira poster and then the new pink tape Akira poster. So yeah, like I said, give some of those people a follow. Check out the work if you guys are looking for some inspiration. That's about it, guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. More of just a breakdown. We're going to have some Blender 3D tutorials coming out next that I'm excited for. We also have Max Novak Effects Pack 4 which if you guys didn't know, I only drop an effects pack maybe like once a year. So I've been working hard on that, trying to put some cool things into there and trying to revamp the business back end of the YouTube channel to give you guys some cool stuff, free or paid. As always, comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see specifically. If you did enjoy, consider leaving a like to help with the YouTube algorithm. Always appreciate you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.